see the injuries kind of slowed him. Still had a decent year last year, did Rashawn Lacey. That's right. Santa Ana College used to be Rancho Santiago. 14 catches. No, he went to Santa Ana Valley High School, oh, San- okay. not college. Okay. There's the completion at the outside. That went to the tight end, McClure. Wyatt McClure, the sophomore from Marina High, the big tight end. Second reception on the evening. Nice misdirection on the play action and a first down. Sticks move up. He gets to the 35. Under five minutes to play in the third quarter. Warm night here in the city of Riverside. First game for the Tigers here at Ramona High. Retzlaff flinging. It's tipped and incomplete. Lacey couldn't quite reel it in. Second and ten. Yeah, that has been kind of a problem tonight. Is there's been a lot of drop balls. Great ball f- thrown by Retzloff. I'm really impressed with this uh, young man, Retzloff. I saw him last year when he was at Golden West, and I, I walked away from that game saying he was the best guy, best quarterback I had seen all of last year. And he's continuing to prove me right. Here's the throw complete to us by their own. We saw him make a great move earlier. Here's another move. And now he's into the open field, spins away. He escapes, one last chance, touchdown. 65 yards, a twisting, elusive run for the touchdown. How about that, Norian Espadron? That looks scripted. What a, an amazing run. The first juke itself stopped everybody, and he continued to make the move. The big fellow almost got him from behind, though. All CIF player was Norian Espadron, his older brother also on the team. Norbert Espadron, they've been returning kicks. All CIF started at Carter, finished up at Etiwanda, and showing some flashes here for RCC as Mariquin pumps it through. Yeah, well, here's that play. Watch this first. Stop. I mean, he stops on a dime, and he goes right by. I mean, he was hit by two players there. There's the spin, and there's the the one from behind. That was three. He just saunters in for a nice touchdown there. Do you know what the Espadron translates to in English? Um, Quick, fast. Swordfish. Is it really? I guess maybe somebody in his lineage was a fisherman. Are you telling me the truth? Look it up. I love swordfish. Yeah, I I have some in in the freezer at home, actually. I made some this week. I like to fight swordfish, too, you know. I like to go in the ocean and battle them out. Well, you're you're swimming against sharks. I don't even get into that, how crazy that is. That was my summer. I got the Gorm family in the the cage, except for baby Luke said, nope, not doing it. 38-21. From the goal line. Caldera straight up the middle, and down he goes at about the 29. Dominic Garcia in on the hit, got some help as well. A couple of orange shirts around there. So right back at it for the Eagles of Mount San Jacinto. Plenty of time left, though. The defense, though, has to figure something out. Retzlaff carving him up. I haven't seen my, my my stats are not updated. Looks like he's he's looks like he's over four hundred. I, I saw oh, four four seventy nine. Yeah, he was over four hundred. Let's see where he is now. Well, I don't know if that includes that last one or not. Four seventy eight. I don't know if it like it if it does either, but that's a pretty good afternoon. Here's the give to Caldera, and down he goes, jumping up and making the tackle. Isaac Garcia, the linebacker out of Grace Brethren. So you know who the coach is? It was actually he re- resigned, I think, before this year. You know who the coach is at Great was at Grace Brethren? No. Josh Henderson. Really? Who had formerly was at Aquinas, but he yes. played for Dick Brewer. He played yes. he's a Fontana guy. Second and nine coming up. Clock still moving. That's Under right. four minutes to That's play. Right. I got a great Josh Henderson story for you. Here comes the pressure. 
Coleman stepping up, flinging to the outside, complete to Tosius, who's going to step outside of about the 39, close to a first down. I don't know if he quite got it. Let's see if the if the uh, where they spot it and if they give it to him. If they don't give it to him, no, they will. It's his first down. They'll move the sticks. But so I think this is back in 2019. I got a chance to do a playoff game out there at Grace Brethren, and it was a back and forth game. Um, you know, it was like one of those like 45, 40, you know, like something like that. And so it was 45, 42. Grace Brethren's down. They had the ball at the 10 yard line with maybe one play left on the clock, and they had a great field goal kicker. So we're thinking they'll just tie it and go to overtime. First down and 10 from the 39. Coleman pulls it down, zings it over the middle. It's complete into RCC territory, making the catch Robert Hazard, climbing over his back and dragging him down on the play. Love win Don Willies for RCC. Good throw and catch there. That is, I mean, that is a missile. That is another hard ball, one of the hardest balls I've seen thrown all season long. 17-yard completion. But getting back to the Josh Henderson story. Had his quarterback run a sneak, won the game, 49-42. And play-by-play, play play, I was working with Gascon in the game, and he went and he asked him, come on, you have that in your back pocket the whole time? He said, yes, I did. There was never a doubt. Down the field, here's the ball is caught, but he was out of bounds. Nice job by Tushis to reel it in, but he was out of bounds. So just, you know, it's that Dick Brewett training. Josh Henderson said he knew... If we get a chance to run that play, I'm going to run that play. And he and called was, it. And it was a call, and he was a quarterback that had been a four-year starter for him. And I think they played Aquinas that year. One of the, they, 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 they might have. Yeah. They might have. He left a great situation at Aquinas, and now he's left a great situation at Grace Brethren. You know, not big programs. I mean, he just went in there and, and, and built them up. Yeah, Aquinas, you talk about that as being one of the premier hot spots here in Southern California. From the 46, here's McGee picking his way, driving forward. He's over the 40-yard line, down to the 39. Nice first down run by Jalen McGee. We've got some Lakeside folks watching tonight, and they're watching their old running back do some nice things for Mount San Jacinto. Boy, he has Just been, delivers punishment. He has been great tonight. Slammed into you, Peterson Lewis. Lewis took the worst of that one. Third down. Under two minutes to play third quarter. Caldera. First down, and Sullivan tackles him at the 30-yard line. So a 10-yard pickup. Sticks will move up. Oh, we have some lightning out here. It's hot. There's lightning. What else could there be? Snow at 105 degrees. <laughs> Get a look at Robert Coleman. Quick throw. The give to Caldera pounds down for maybe a yard. They're going to have a hard time getting up that playoff here. They got down to 10 seconds. Ticking down at the end of the third quarter. Caldera races off the field. Hicks to the bottom of your screen. Shot clock, uh, the shot clock, the game clock, uh, the play clock expires. But I guess they called the timeout. Yeah, called the timeout with right before the timer went off here. So it's cooled down considerably. When we got here a couple hours before the game, Jeff. It was pretty steaming down there. No, it was it was it was wonderful. It was a hundred, hundred and twenty. I would imagine hundred and twenty plus on that field. All I know is I left the house at about two hundred and eighty-five pounds, and today I'm going to go home about two hundred and forty pounds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if I say that, everybody's going. Wow, I wonder how tall I'm. Six eight, so I'm I'm allowed to lose a little bit. 478, 478 yards for Retzloff, five touchdowns, three touchdowns for Coleman through the air. He's thrown for 257. Yeah. 
neither team really rushing for much, Jeff. No, they they really haven't. There hasn't been any big runs. It's just been those long passes. But when you have 257 and 479 through the air, I guess there's not a lot of need to run. No. Second and seven coming up. Line is the 29. Coleman goes down. Racing down the teeth of the defense was Isaac Garcia stopping Coleman in his tracks. And Coleman was slow to get up there. He took a shot. Just Garcia ri- rolled over his blocker. There will be some gesticulating when they watch that film <laughs> yes, on Monday. Somebody is going to point something out. You see the seconds running off at the end of here, the third quarter. Third and ten line is the 28. Four down territory, so there are two plays being called here. And that's the end of the third quarter. 38-21 after 45 minutes here at Ramona High School. The opener for RCC coming off the state final last year where they lost 22-19 to uh, City College of San Francisco. Had an opportunity for a winning touchdown with under two minutes to play. An interception inside the 10. Now, now Gazal, you and I love working for the city of Riverside. Indeed we do. Indeed we do. Oh, it's one of the best gigs and jobs you could ever imagine. If you would love to work for Riverside and you're looking for a job close to home, the city of Riverside is hiring and accepting applications for a wide variety of positions. Check out Riverside CA dot gov backslash jobs for a full list of openings so if you want to come work for the city of riverside maybe you could work with gazal and, my, and myself go over there to and we the, want people that want to do it look at this by their own here this is an incredible play oh it's the run of the, the run of the night there it is explore the opportunities join the city of riverside team go to riverside ca gov backslash jobs. What, do you know what kind of jobs are available, Jeff? All jobs are available. We are in a we are in a hiring frenzy here in the city of Riverside. So if you want a job and work for the best city, for gosh sakes, you go to that website. And remember, Tamale Fest September 10th, right there on the screen. It says right above the score, 11 to 7 p.m. I can't wait for the Riverside Tamale Fest. Go to Riv. TamaleFest.com for all of the information. Third down from the 32. Coleman under pressure, trying to find some space. He's going to tuck it under, and there's Garcia waiting for him, brings him down at about the 26, so he'll get six yards. It'll be fourth and four coming up. I'd have to think they're going to go for it here. I would think, but Coleman, man, what a great run there. I mean, he is running angry gets away from one there and straight arms and leans in to try to take the shot gotta love that from the quarterback so they said officially the 27 so a fourth and five coming up i think they're gonna have to be moved back even five yards here they're gonna have to call a timeout and they're gonna call a timeout yeah that hurts that hurts them they have just one timeout left now. They do, and opportunity to maybe get some points. I mean, it's, that would be a shot, but we've seen it before. So th- through three quarters here, Robert Coleman, 24 of 32 with three touchdowns. We mentioned 257 yards. Jake Retzlaff, 28 of 42, 478 yards, five touchdowns in the one, the pick in the, in the end zone. A leading rusher for RCC, nine Carries for Jacques Jones. Jacques has Jones. He has 42 yards. Leading rusher Jalen McGee for Mount San Jacinto. He has seven carries for 27 yards. Receiving wise, nine uh, catches for Reggie Redslap, 184 yards and a touchdown. McGee, three catches for 79 yards. Of course, the big 66 yard touchdown for him. And uh, that's that. Those are impressive overall numbers. 528 total yards for RCC. 268 for Mount San Jacinto. Nine different receivers. Getting some touches tonight. So fourth and five. Coleman, the designed run. 
One cut. Touchdown. Talk about a big play. 27-yard run for touchdown by Coleman on a fourth down. Well, Coleman did it on two possessions. Like I said, he ran angry, and he took care of business. He knew exactly where he was going, and he made it happen. So three touchdown passes and one touchdown run for Coleman. He's been the star for Mount San Jacinto, and that pumps through. 38-28, a 10-point ten, ten game, still a two-possession game, and a big sequence coming up here for the defense of Mount San Jacinto. We're going to look at the drive for the Eagles. Stepping up, Coleman makes the play, gets it to Toshis. Coleman again, middle of the field, nice completion there. Through good coverage. McGee. Throwing catch down to the 30. Here's that first run. Like I said, it was a great one. Sets up the fourth down play. Coleman was a pretty good runner last year as well. Ran 66 times, 463 yards, averaged seven yards a carry, and had seven touchdowns. So Coleman, a dual threat, doing a nice job for Mount San Jacinto. It's 38-28. The Eagles hanging around. Can their defense stop the Tigers? Touchback. They've given up over 528 yards, but they're still in this one. Can they get that stop? Can they get that turnover? Look at the RCC sideline. Still the best helmet in JC football, would you say? I think it's a pretty darn good look. Very, very reminiscent of the Bengals. What do you think of the new the unis? The orange-colored uh, kits, they I, debuted I, them today. I love them. From the 25. No gain on the play. Our first look at Allende Bacole, 180-pound running back from Culver City out of L.A. Second down coming up. Play action. Here's the complete uh, the throw and incomplete. And there's the flag. He's gonna it's gonna be a pass interference. Is now the sideline for Mount San Jacinto is saying that was uncatchable. They're talking about it. The signal you 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 run your hand over your head. Yes. And that looks like they're going to keep the play. They're not going to pull it up. And they do call. So defensive pass interference and a break for RCC. Now you hear the boo birds here. But, uh, you know, you might have said, hey, that was an uncatchable ball. But the, the contact made it uncatchable. I can see why the referees would say that. So I think it was a pretty good call as we looked at the replay. So ball to the 36-yard line. Retzlaff throwing. This time he'll complete it to the 45-yard line. Caught by Alfred Jordan. So close to a first down. It'll be second and short at the 45. So Retzlaff at six yards away from being over 500 passing yards in his first game here at RCC. Throw the ball to the outside. It is complete for a first down at the 42-yard line. Not a bad start as your uh, career for the Tigers. He was one of my favorite quarterbacks. So, I mean, look at the lineage that has been come through uh, Corona Centennial. Tyler. Indeed. 
Tanner McKee was the National Player of the Year, plays up at Stanford, so he's going to be a high draft pick. I mean, they just they just bring them all in. And I'll tell you what, the rest of that family is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, they have been fun to watch here at RCC and last year at Golden West, but I'm sure I am happy he's playing for us now. So RCC now stops the clock with 12.49 to play. Fourth quarter here, and that's a big penalty, that P.I., because yes. you're Mount Santa Santa, you just scored. You'd like to get a stop and take the ball back. And here you go now, RCC driving, and you know they don't need to be close. Nope. Got a nice little breeze coming through here right now. Oh, it feels great. 31-yard touchdown, a 65-yard touchdown pass. A couple of 40 yards that weren't for touchdowns. but And there it is again. My favorite thing is the tamales. I'm going to try them all. I'm going to try the, the fish tamales. I'm going to try the pork, the chicken, the beef. I'm going to try them all. The September 10th, that'll be next next Saturday. We'll be there. So we got a game against Long Beach City. So you leave RCC, or you leave Ramona by about 4.30. Uh, we have plenty of time. But you get you downtown by 5 o'clock just when the tamales eating's getting good. That's when the, that's when they're going to be piping hot, and there's going to be some dancing. There's going to be some music, and I will be there. If you see me there, buy me a tamale or buy me a lovely beverage. It's sure to be hot. First and 10 RCC from the 41. Reslaff launches it deep. Got a man. Good play. Had his brother Reggie there, but knocked away by Karsten Mamaro. That's a big play. Huge play. Got his hand in there, left hand. It looked like he like, batted the ball down. But we've seen this about three times tonight, going right down the middle. The same play. That's, that's good defense. Second down. Also advantageous for Mount San Jacinto stops the clock with the incomplete pass. Retzlaff. Complete, close to another first down. Alfred Jordan with the catch. Quentin Evans on the tackle for Mount San Jacinto. I just love Retzlaff, man. He's just standing in the pocket and just kind of taking what's available. Watching his recognition, it's almost like one of those, you know, those point-of-view video games, right? Exactly. You watch him, he goes through each progression. I mean, it's... It's like, with that, it's like that Top Gun movie, right, when it lights up? Yes. <laughs> Incomplete. Lacey couldn't bring it in. And that has been, I, 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 honestly, I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Kraft will address this, but there have been more drop balls for, I mean, this would have been a lot of extra yards. Hit him in a bad spot right in the hands. So fourth and two, and here's Tom Kraft leaving the offense on the field. Jock has Jones, and he got it. I got to say, he didn't get it, it looks like. Let's see. Needed to get over the 29. I thought he got over the 29, Jeff. I thought he did as well, but now Coach Kraft is walking out there now, too. I haven't seen Coach Kraft walk in the field in a long time. So let's see what the spot's going to be. So they're gonna they're gonna have to measure this official timeout. We haven't seen the chain gang all year long so far. We've covered a few games. So yeah, you mentioned Tom Kraft out on the field. All kinds of reaction to that. Go, go, 
Here comes this. Yeah, I, I think they got it. I thought with an ache and eye they got it, but let's see. I think you're right, Gazal. It's going to be. Let's see. Oh. It's not going to make it. So big play by the defense for the Eagles. They stop the Tigers. So ball goes over to Mount San Jacinto. Great job by the defense. Defensive staff for Mount San Jacinto, Xavier Smith, Justin Schaefer. Matt Willard. So here's an opportunity for Mount San Jacinto. How quickly can they get a score? A lot of time left in this ball game. Thirty-eight twenty-eight. They trail by ten, and the ball's on the turf. Talik Brown lost the ball. Picked up by RCC. Touchdown. Talib Salahuddin, Johnny on the spot, scooped it up and bought it into the end zone. If there's anybody that could have done that, it's Alu Hadin. I have seen that guy play for a couple years now. He is the best athlete on the field. He was able to run and grab that perfect play. Let's see. Was there a flag? Yeah, there's the flag on the far side over there. Officials having a discussion. We need the Jeopardy music, Jeff. It would be great. I mean, pretty clear that it was a fumble and a scoop. I don't know what the flag would affect. But what a great scoop. Mm -hmm. I think they wanted it to be a forward pass. So if it's a forward pass, it's just an incomplete pass. Yes. And the officials ruled that it was a handoff. And no one was going to touch him after he Yeah, got once he ball. picked it up, that was, was over. Him. That was fait accompli. So a big play by the defense for Mount San Jacinto, and then RCC's defense picks up their offense with the touchdown on the turnover. Mara Quinn puts it through. So a 17-point lead for RCC with just under 12 minutes to play, Jeff. Yeah, it was a huge play right there. That could have changed the game. Hey, don't doubt the drought. Remember, you got to go. Extreme drought conditions persist throughout the state of California, so saving water now is more important than ever to protect water supplies into the future. Step up to water-saving efforts by irrigating between the hours of 6 p.m. and 10 a.m. to avoid losses to evaporation. Visit RiversidePublicUtilities.com backslash drought for more water-saving tips, tricks, tricks, and rebates. So RCC will kick it off again. Jacob Marquin back out on the field. Brown from the two. Talik Brown had the fumble moments ago, and he lost it again. RCC football. Wow. 
That's just getting to the ball quick. And you watch. I mean, everybody gets to him quickly here. And that's the big hit right there's there. There's the ball on the turf. And looked like the man who picked it up for RCC, Jayon Farrar, the sophomore from Highland, New Jersey, out of Donovan Catholic. Do you know Donovan Catholic? I don't. You're a New Jersey guy. Highland, you know. yeah, but Highland's not not we're not in North Jersey where I'm from. So, so it's not a cool place. It's no, it's cool. fine. I just, I just I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with it. Jerry Hurley probably would be. Talk to Jerry Hurley. I'll, I'll have to ask him. Riverside Sports Hall of Fame. 45-28, RCC with the ball back at the 20. Going for it after the turnover. I like that call. As soon as you get a turnover, I love when they take a shot at the end zone, Jeff. You have to like it. So that was to the other brother, Norbert. Norbert Espadrion, yeah. So unofficially, we do have... Jake Retzlaff in his first game at RCC over 500 yards. Second down. Here's the throw. Did he catch it? Complete. They're going to call it a catch. The replay speaks for itself. <laughs> so first and goal from the five. A lot of folks here did not agree with that call. So RCC now calls a timeout. Mentioned um, five new assistant coaches for Tom Craft this year. Five. Yeah. And another one, you know, uh, not, so there were some uh, returnees. Dan Barlage, who was on the staff for many years, that went to Coach Valley View. He's back on Coach Craft's staff. Now. That's right. Remember his son played, Jacob Barlage played for, that 2019 national championship team that went up to Nevada. And his wife coached a state champion volleyball team. Touchdown. Finds his brother, Reggie Retzlaff, for another touchdown. So when they go home, you know, I still picture the Rhett Slap brothers sharing a room. Do they talk about the game tonight? I mean, of course. Flag comes in. PAT is good. Let's see what the flag's all about. Another look at that fumble. That was the pass. And then here's the touchdown, buying some time and then throwing it into the end zone for his brother Jake. Yeah, who has a better night? I mean, Jake, he's throwing for 529 yards. His brother has almost 200 in the receiving with two TDs. Who do you give the game ball to if you're uh, if you're the parents of the Red Slabs? <laughs> Which one gets the game ball? I think you got to invest in two game balls. You both, give them. Them both of them. <laughs> I mean, what a debut though for the Red Slab brothers. You know, on the first game they're playing together, and that's a little bit of excitement that's if cool. you're an RCC fan. Fifty-two twenty-eight, Maraquin to kick it away. Here's Brown again. Talik Brown 
absorbs a big hit, but goes down to the 35-yard line. Boy, watch this hit. Carlos Meza, sophomore out of Valencia. But Brown, he was going, he had focus. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was going to run through you. Just ran into He was going wall. fast. Meza was going fast. They ran into each other. <laughs> what happened? From the 35, the Eagles now down 24. It seemed like they were just down 10. Darius Johnson with the carry, the freshman from Honolulu. Up near the 40, about four yards on that carry. Another look at it. Garcia with the tackle. So give him three yards on the play. Flag called here. That was Johnson again. No flag, actually. So maybe a yard on the play, bring up third down. <laughs> two by two in the formation. Screen play, and he can't hold on to it. Trying to get it to Emilio Valencia. So fourth down coming up, and the punt team comes out. Connor Meltzer has been pretty good today, the freshman from Etiwanda. It was a game where the Eagles kind of hung around and then that fourth quarter. They got the stop and then the couple of turnovers just kind of really flipped the game back over to RCC. The RCC converted on those turnovers quickly, did they? I mean, it was before you knew it. They were up they were up huge here. So ball goes out of bounds at the 24. 38-yard kick, no return. That's where RCC will start out. First week between RCC and San Jacinto. We got four more coming up for you. I mean, for the playoffs, obviously, but thanks to all the RCC folks who tuned in. And also, if you're on the Mount San Jacinto side, get a chance to see your team as well. Lots of, great to see some local kids playing for yeah. both, both schools. Casey Mazota there on the shot. Head coach for Mount San Jacinto. Bud Bernie in a quarterback. Bernie with the run there. The kid out of Riverside Poly. A heck of a basketball player. Starting quarterback last year for the Tigers. Works, re works really hard in the offseason. Coach Kraft really likes Bud Bernie. Everybody loves Bud Bernie. So good night at the office for Jake Retzlaff. Here's the completion to Christopher Mejia. Mejia, the sophomore from Canyon Springs out of Moreno Valley. Tight end rumbles up to the 35-yard uh, the, the line.
There's the completion. And there he goes. Jordan Williams. Touchdown on the little swing pass from Bud Burney. He takes it the rest of the way. 65 yards, another Tigers touchdown. Another Tigers giant touchdown. They have been big play after big play when they have scored. I mean, the scoop and score by Salah Udin, you could see it just deflated the Eagles. Just deflated them. Because they thought they were in a position right there to make it happen. And then they could cut, cut it to three or cut it to one score. And then all of a sudden, the turnover and the Tigers run it into the end zone. Two plays, 68 yards from Bud Burney. So Bud Burney coming in, doing taking care of business. You know, as Tom Hanks, uh, Tom Hanks, as Tom Kraft wants it, right? He doesn't want any drop off. Depth is always big. We were having our conversation this week. Just depth was really big to him. He could. Tom Hanks could play Coach Kraft, though. Sure, maybe. He's playing Geppetto in a new, new uh, Pinocchio. He can definitely play Tom Kraft. Yeah, you know, Kurt Russell would be a good Tom Kraft. That's it's a good, solid, solid one, yeah. Fifty-nine twenty-eight after the touchdown. Yeah, it was just a ten-point lead. It seemed like just a couple minutes ago. And poof, Tom Kraft. It was a uh, ten-point game in the third quarter at five fifty-seven. I'm sorry, 14-24 the fourth quarter. You're right, 14-24. Colmo, the 27-yard run. And then Salahuddin scooped up the fumble at 11-39. Here's the return. Caldera has some space. Finally, it's Marroquin himself that makes the tackle near midfield. So the kicker making the tackle. Ah, he's my new favorite. And he's got my number. Good, good tackle there. Look at Maraquin giving up his body there. So good return by Caldera. He got it out to the Riverside, uh, the Riverside City College side of the field. Screen pass. Tate with the tackle. Bryce Tate makes the play. Reception. Darius Johnson for Mount, uh, Mount San Jacinto. Let me wait for the, the call here. Let's uh, go against Riverside. Intercepted. That'll be a pick six for Jesse Bradbury. The freshman from Summit has stepped up today. You know, Tom Kraft talking about needing some of the young defensive players to step up and a flag on the play. Uh, looks like they're gonna. This is gonna be nullified. I don't believe it'll be a touchdown here. Waiting for the official to make an official ruling here, but it looks like that's all gonna come back, and that the ball will go back to Mount San Jacinto 
59-28, 6.58 to play in regulation. Thanks for joining us on Riverside TV. Gazelle Hassan with you along with Jeff Gorham. Nick Rice down on the sidelines, our entire award-winning Riverside TV crew. Back at it. So it is a pass interference call. So they'll mark it off against RCC first down, Mount San Jacinto. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Lines the 42. There's that play they tried to run to Talik Brown earlier that resulted in the scoop and score for Salahuddin. This time he gets about four on it. Michael Carney running that one, the freshman from Paris, from or out of Orange Vista. Has some family and friends in the stands tonight. Took a few Tigers to take him down. Roman Tololo there, also stepping in, making a play. Dalen Kyles out of Rancho Verde. Started his career at King, but finished up at Rancho Verde. Coleman still in there. Incomplete. I have been impressed, though. Coleman is a tough, tough uh, quarterback. He's had himself over 250 yards in the air. You know, 257 at the end of the third quarter has no throw passing yards yet here in the fourth. Fourth down coming up. Coleman, quick throw, a completion, and a first down. Talik Brown makes the catch down at the 27-yard line. They push that clock to keep running here. I mean, it's a, you know, 30-point lead now, so not the sense of urgency it was maybe when it was a 10-point lead, a two-score game, even a three-score yeah. game. Yeah, now, now the job is to play smart and don't get hurt here with the last five minutes of the ball game. Another completion near a first down. I don't think he quite got it. Emilio Valencia catches it. Yeah, Valencia out of Rancho Christian. Ele 11 different receivers. I've caught the football for Riverside tonight. And seven for uh, San Jacinto. Coleman pulls it down, and then down he goes. Just inside the 20. Tackle on the play made by Adrian Williams, the freshman out of JW North. Husky making a play. Looking for the end zone. Incomplete. Matthew Hicks, the intended receiver. Sophomore from Heritage. Good throw there from Coleman. Great defense, though, by the Tiger there. But a pretty good throw. Actually, a great throw. Bryce Tate on the coverage. So fourth down and one. Here we go. 
401 to play in this one. Big surge by Riverside here in the fourth quarter. Looks like a first down. So first down, ball on the 18, they'll move the sticks. Clock continues to move as they reset the football. Starting quarterback Coleman and Talik Brown still in there. Coleman readjusts, moving to the left side, directing traffic now. Now he'll just run it. Gets out of bounds. Around the 10 yard line. So, about a nine yard run. So no penalty on that play, but second and one coming up. And they'll start the clock on the snap. Let's see if they can get a first down. Coleman rolling right. End zone. Complete out of bounds. You'll have the first down. They'll stop the clock right around three minutes to play. The reception by Emilio Valencia for Mount San Jacinto. We'll stop the clock at 3.01. It's a first and goal. RCC bringing in a whole new defense. See if they can make a stop here. First and goal line up at the three-yard line. Full house backfield behind Young. A lot of new faces, new numbers in there. I'm confused why it's taking so darn long, though. The official has in front. I don't know. I'm not wondering why they're not letting him snap it. And I guess the clock needs to be adjusted. Touchdown, Jalen McGee. McGee, second touchdown reception on the evening from Robert Coleman, who's thrown four touchdown passes. So 59-34. This is all basically cosmetic at this point, Jeffrey. It is. And, you know, it's, it's a time really for Coach Kraft with this defense. He brought in all, all new guys. You know, he's, his depth, he was, you know, questioning. Now he gets to see who can play a little bit here. Two-point conversion is good. They'll go to James Sakare out of Rev, Redlands East Valley. He mentioned that, you know, the recruiting restrictions at the junior college level have been relaxed a little bit. So it'll give them an opportunity. You know, they're always still going to look at the local guys, but now he has an opportunity potentially to go, you know, into L.A., go to Northern California. They're still going to get the bounce backs. He made a great point to me. We were talking about the bounce backs. We get a look at the drive for Mount San Jacinto. And Tom Kraft said, if you look at our bounce backs, they tend to be local guys. 
you know, because we track those players and we kind of know what the situation is. And um, that if you're a bounce back and a local guy, understand that we, you know, we evaluate you and want you to play at a high level. A great example he gave me was J. Ma McGlory. He said, you know, McGlory, for a variety of reasons, he was a little bit undersized. We loved him. But plus, he didn't really have a big year until his senior year. By then, they're not recruiting you anymore as Peterson's going to pooch it. Ball loose on the turf. RCC, I believe they have it. But he said, you know, I told Jimon, if you come to RCC and can produce like you did in high school, you get an opportunity to play, which is what happened, which is what worked out for him. Yeah, we had a chance to watch him in high school. He was a tremendous high school player. Yeah, but even because of the situation of the program, he didn't really have a big year till his senior year. Yeah. And by then, the recruiters generally, you know, we saw the kid uh, Matuti at last night for Campbell Hall. They were on him in, at the end of 10th grade. Now they're on him this year. And so that's how they do it. And, of course, they're always watching. All the scouts are watching. But, you know, that's the whole thing is if you're getting a guy, look at Tom Kraft there. First and 10 for RCC from the 35. Taken down on the backfield is Bryce Strong. In at quarterback, Alex Grotto. Grotto, 6'1", freshman from Los Gatos, but he started at Old Miss. It was a little bit of a different bounce back for RCC in Grotto. Not a bad bounce back. He come from Old Miss. He was a non-scholarship player at Ole Miss, so now looking for another opportunity after RCC. Clock continues to move here. Second and 14 coming up. Big lead for the Riverside uh, City Tigers. Let me tell you, it was a close game till the beginning of the fourth quarter. Mount San Jacinto actually had a stop as they'll give the ball back to Young, and down he goes. Nice play for Miron Hazim. Freshman out of Norda Vista, so Norda Vista kid making a play. Love to see him in the ball game. He was a great player at uh, Norda Vista. Captain, Vista's. right? Yeah, captain was, uh, I believe, the defensive player of the year in the River Valley League. All CIF performer. He's like one of those kids you think they'll be president, right? He's, he could be president. He might be. He can't be because he wasn't born in the United States, but like he's got that disposition about him. Right up the middle. And moving the ball to the other side of the field, Robert Valentine. Valentine, a local kid, too, out of Arlington, rips up the middle to the 45-yard line. Big run, 25-yard run for Valentine. Instead, I believe that's Donovan Harvey. He's 28, not 26. My bad. Harvey out of Elsinore. We played for the longtime head coach there, Tony Peralta. Under a minute to play. And the kneel down by Grotto. So back next Saturday against Long Beach City College. Give me a quick assessment of what you thought about. Obviously, Retzlaff, Retzlaff, and Retzlaff, right? I mean, they were phenomenal. But I'll tell you what, it was the defense that really came up with some big plays to, off the turnovers, right? And honestly, they just you know, RCC played, 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 and then they just hit that stride, which we've seen so many times where they can they can score in bunches. And I'll tell you what, they they scored in bunches in this fourth quarter as they really really took control, scoring twenty one points here in the fourth. That should be the last snap of the ball game. And that's the end of the game. You hear the gun sound. 59-36 the final. And it was it was a tight game till the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, RCC opened up some space between them and Mount San Jacinto. Uh, I think a well-played game by the Eagles as well. And obviously RCC kind of showed that firepower through the air, but it was the defense making some big plays late. It was. And, and you talk about the firepower of, of RCC. I mean, hey, they're two-time... One time, you know, the national champ two years, three years ago, then they're in the state championship this past year. And, and I think they st had a great first game of, against a very solid opponent here in Mount Sac. So a very uh, 
great win for RCC. I think the great thing about this game for both teams is you can both build on it. Both teams can build on it going forward. We get a look at some of the highlights from the game. All right, we'll go down to Nick Rice. He's got Tom Kraft ready to go. Talk about the win against Mount San Jacinto. Nick, take it away. All right, just a second. All right, I'm joined by RCC coach Tom Kraft. Tigers win the game. What were your thoughts? I thought it was a typical first game. Uh, there were some really good things from us, uh, particularly on offense, and then there were some things we got to really work on. So uh, we had some big plays. Uh, they were the difference, but we won the turnover battle in a high-scoring game, and, and that was it. It's easy to win in a game like this when you've got that guy behind center. What are your thoughts of Jake and how he played? Well, I think he played good overall, but he made some mistakes in the first half, and uh, uh, that's part of getting to know our offense a little bit more and, and how we want him to play in it. But uh, you can see the potential in him. Uh, he's been working really hard on, on his drop, his platform in the pocket, and um, as we play more games, I anticipate him getting better and better. And also his brother, you know, what is what is the relationship like with those two and how have they gelled? Well, it's obviously too close, <laughs> um, you know, but, but one of the things we're working on is, you know, don't just throw to your brother. You know, we spread it around. And so overall, you know, it's a good, good job. Reggie's, we got, got to keep him healthy. We've got some good young receivers that stepped up tonight, um, and uh, that's a real good thing. That's what I wanted to see. We have three good returning, four good returning stars with Devin Getchaway and J.J. Tucker and uh, Lacey, uh, as well as Reggie. So the other freshmen st stepped up and, and did a real good job. I'm disappointed in our lack of ability to run the ball tonight. That's what we got to really get that squared away. Well, plenty of passing yards tonight, Coach, and congratulations on the win. All right, Tigers victorious as they put up over 500 passing yards and the quarterbacks threw for six touchdowns. That will get it done almost any week. Guys, back to you. 597 passing yards. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Coach Kraft. 673 yards all told. You know, Mount San Jacinto rolled up 343 yards, but in that fourth quarter, those big plays by the defense, the difference, Jeff Gorham. They were huge. And, and talking about Coach Kraft, he said, hey, he has a lot of great receivers. They hit 11 different receivers in tonight's game. But I'll tell you what, it's going to get a whole lot tougher. They have six opponents that are ranked in the top 25 in the state of California, and it starts next week when they're going to have to play a very, very good Long Beach City team. So RCC with the win. They start the year 1-0. and uh, Some standout numbers, 529 yards and six touchdowns for Jake Rutzlaff in his RCC debut. His brother Reggie with 10 catches for 194 yards, a 42-yard uh, completion and two touchdowns as well. Jawan Tucker caught a pair of touchdowns. Rashawn Lacey had 73 receiving yards as well for RCC, who win this game by a score of 59-36. For Jeff Gorham, Nick Rice, and our entire award-winning Riverside TV crew, my name is Ghazal Hassan. We'll talk to you next Saturday when RCC takes on Long Beach City College. Until then, so long, everybody.